hundreds of thousands of dollars in release week sales, thousands of boxes. But when you peek behind the curtain and look at the data, the story of doom, gloom, and possible unmitigated disaster starts to reveal itself. Let's look at Dominaria Remastered sales data. Dominaria Remastered release week came and went, and with it were $300,000 in release week sales, plus what I think could be some indicators of looming doom, disaster on the horizon. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the set and the set sales as a whole, and then we're going to peek behind the curtain at the data I have aggregated to make up kind of these graphs and all this information, and we're going to say what that means for the Magic the Gathering community stores and more importantly what it means for regular consumers like you and me so without further ado it's time for one of my favorite parts of these videos let's dig into the data here we have the aggregate we have all of the sales of sealed product from tcg player for dominaria remastered and if you want to get your hands on this data i'll pin a comment in the comment section below that will actually be a link to january's data all of the data for january is free to everyone on my patreon it's free no matter you don't have to subscribe or anything like that you can get your hands on all this data do whatever you want with it but let's talk about how this set is selling we see right here at the very top we see a total spend of 1.2 and some odd change million dollars with an average price per box again this is aggregate across collector and draft people are spending 210 dollars on average with a total box sale of almost 6,000 boxes just on tcg player alone we see here that the draft box is still king we love the draft box when it has valuables but we're still willing to spend on the collector box we look at the spend for collector boxes we're not too far behind we're chasing that draft box and we want to open those foils this is proof in the pudding right the regular two products you know two skew release for a magic the gathering set can work if the draft box and the collector box are both made extremely well we have some of the pre-sale data here and we've compared it to some of the brothers war and later this week i'll be doing the new phyrexia pre-sales data but this isn't what i found most interesting i want to talk about a couple red flag sales a couple red flag things that are happening in the data that makes up these charts that really could affect your community my community and how we interact interact with this product in the future. And the first thing we're going to look at is the collector case. Now the collector case here could be considered to, you know, be the the high trophy item for this product. It is it is the most exp expensive variant of this product. It is the most of them so you get six collector boxes in a collector case and as you see here you actually get a pretty good premium but there's a couple of interesting sales that i wanted to highlight here and if we look on 121 and 120 we see four separate sales and seven total items sold where the collector case is selling for a thousand dollars and under my goodness now we see i added this column here for an average cost per box we see that average is out to as low as 150 dollars per collector box these sales are insane and there has been a rumored announcement thanks alpha investments and thanks to my contacts in the industry about this second print run of collector product coming now did that spark with this price drop we'll talk about that in a minute but i want to go over the rest of these red flag sales so keep that in the back of your mind keep these 150 dollars for a collector box keep that in the back of your mind as we move on to the actual collector box itself and we look at some collector boxes being sold extremely cheap cheaply now these are not as cheap as let's say some of the other sales but my oh my we see collector boxes selling at 202 205 you know dollars per box a couple red flag sales uh into the mid to later of this month before we jump back up to the 238 and if we order this by date here we see that those kind of sales are smattered in there around 120 119 there's one on 116 i believe this was about the time that the rumor of the restock could have come out so i think this is an extremely interesting and terrifying sale uh, i don't know how to feel about this 
But I think this is another indicator. Keep that in the back of your mind. 150 for collector boxes when bought as a case, kind of 202, 205. When you're buying separately, moving on to the draft case, we see something similar, though not as egregious. 123, 135, 136 down when you're buying out a case. And we look at the draft boxes themselves. We do see a couple low numbers, but nothing crazy low. So we're seeing these big case premiums. And it's funny because these draft boxes are selling for as cheap as those weird one-off sales. You know, these random sales on TCG Player. Now, I promised you guys a take and some doom and gloom, and I am definitely going to deliver here because, in my opinion, this is not great. When we break down these sales, it's important to, for us to realize that Magic the Gathering has not only changed from a consumer perspective, from you know behind or from the other side of the counter, as I call it, for you and me, our regular enthusiasts but it has changed for stores as well. I think what we're seeing here is a lot of stores being caught up in the old way that you could do business with Magic the Gathering. A lot of stores, it used to be, you just ordered whatever you wanted to order. You could keep it in stock. You could keep it in the back room. And eventually Magic being so popular, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, whatever million players that we have in our community, eventually the product would sell. Well, that was before the business model has changed and Wizards of the Coast has shown that they're not willing to hold on to this excessive or this excess product. They're not willing to be caught holding the bag, so to say. So a lot of these stores are ordering product and then being hit with the reality that, oh my goodness, if I hold this and other stores race to the bottom below me and dump this product, I might not be able to sell my product. I might be stuck holding on to thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, if not maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars of boxes for the foreseeable future. Now, in my opinion, one day, will that come around? Will people want to revisit this set? Of course, but most stores can't afford to do that. It's important for us to know, as we want affordable prices on these products, somebody is left holding the bag. And right now, given these prices, it's the store. And this means that our Magic the Gathering communities could change forever in this year. I have been one to mention and been a part of a group that's mentioned on the May the Zuby with you podcast that we believe that stores and local game stores, the LGS kind of economy and community is drastically going to shrink this year. As sad as that is, we are going to see a lot of local game stores unable to make it work. Magic the Gathering and Pokemon make up of some of their biggest earners for a year. And as Wizards of the Coast continues to print these boxes in such high numbers, causing a crazy race to the bottom as well as the looming threat the giant mothership that may at any moment drop product onto amazon onto our heads you know being there being a thought in the back of the brain the business has changed no longer can you afford to buy all this product and just hope it sells you really have to nail down your sales numbers and magic the gathering can still be extremely profitable for a store but the change in the game is it's no longer a buy and hold it's no longer how much can i get my hands on put it in the back room. It is now, how many sales am I going to make? What does my community need? And I have to unload the product quickly, wait to see how we, the community and the enthusiasts, you know, kind of gravitates towards the product, and then maybe do a restock based on our needs. That is the game now. It's a race to see how quickly you can get the product out of the community, see how the community receives that product, and then maybe reach in for more. But for enthusiasts like us, we can enjoy some re ridiculous low prices. Now, I'll track those sales, you know, kind of see if any of them are rescinded or disappear in the future and see if any of them were a mistake. But it's important to note that us, you know, community enthusiasts can find some really good deals out there, even under sad circumstances. So it's good to know kind of how the economy and how our, our favorite hobby works. And it's really interesting to follow this over the course of the next year and see what these sales numbers do. Now, with new Phyrexia, or sorry, not I keep saying new Phyrexia, Phyrexia All Will Be One releasing shortly, I am all about the completed bundle. My next video this week will be tracking the pre-sale information and the completed bundle sales are insane. So if you're not subscribed yet, remember to click that subscribe button so you can be around while we try to track that info and see how it affects you and me, guys. I think this is really interesting. If you have any takes on this that I didn't cover today, make sure you put them in the comment section below i appreciate each and every one of you until next time you guys know me my name is josh i will see you around